and welcome to Tom and Ben News Wikipedia News Edition. Our fifth episode is... Pringles. Pringles is an American brand of potato and wheat, made stackable snack chips. <laughs> it is owned by Kellogg's. Originally developed by Procter and Gamble, P&G, in 1967, and marketed as Pringles Newfangled Potato Chips, the brand was sold to Kellogg's in 2012. <laughs> As of 2011, Pringles are sold in more than 140 countries. In 2012, Pringles were the fourth most popular snack brand after Lay's, Doritos, and Cheetos, all manufactured by Frito Lay, with 2.2% market share globally. In 1956, Procter & Gamble assigned a task to chemist Frederick J. Hoare, 1918, 2008, to develop a new kind of potato chips to address consumer complaints about broken, greasy, and stale chips, as well as air in the bags. Hoare <laughs> spent two years developing saddle-shaped chips from fried dough and selected the tubular can as the chips container. <sighs> However, he could not figure out how to make the chips taste good, and was pulled off the task to work on another brand. In the mid-1960s, another P&G researcher, Alexander Lyot of Montgomery, Ohio, restarted Moore's work and succeeded in improving the taste. Although Moore was a true inventor of the Pringles chip, Lyot's name is on the patent. <laughs> Gene Wolfe, a mechanical engineer and author known for science fiction and fantasy novels, helped develop the machine that cooks them. The consistent saddle shape is mathematically known as a hyperbolic paraboloid. <laughs> Their designers reportedly used supercomputers to ensure that the chip's aerodynamics would keep them in place during packaging and that they well tea break when being stacked on top of each other. PMG began selling Pringles in limited areas in 1967. By 1975, they were available across most of the USA, and by 1991, were distributed internationally. There are several theories behind the origin of the product's name. <laughs> One theory refers to Mark Pringle, who filed a U.S. patent 2,286,644 titled The Method and Apparatus for Processing Potatoes on March 5, 1937. Pringle's work was cited by PMG in filing their own patent for improving the taste of dehydrated processed potatoes. <laughs> Another theory suggests that two Proctor advertising employees lived on Pringle Drive in City Town, north of Cincinnati, Ohio, and the name paired well with potato chips. Oh. Another theory says that PMG chose the Pringle's name from a Cincinnati telephone book. The product was originally known as Pringles, newfangled potato chips, but other snack manufacturers objected, saying Pringles failed to meet the definition of a potato chip, since they were made from a potato. They taste no rather than being sliced from potatoes like real potato chips. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration weighed in on the matter, and in 1975 they ruled Pringles could only use the word chip in their product name within the phrase potato chips made from fried potatoes. Faced with such a lengthy and unpalatable appellation, Pringles eventually renamed their product potato crisps instead of chips. In July 2008, in the London High Court, PMG lawyers successfully argued that Pringles were not crisps, even though labeled potato crisps on the container in Britain, what are known as chips in the U.S. are known as crisps. As the potato content was only 42% and their shape, PMG stated, is not found in nature.
This ruling against the United Kingdom value added tax, VAT, a duties tribunal decision to the contrary, exempted Pringles from the then 17.5% VAT for potato crisps and potato derived snacks. <sighs> In May 2009, the Court of Appeal reversed the earlier decision. A spokesman for PMG stated it had been paying the VAT proactively, a no no back taxes. In April 2011, PMG agreed to the US $2.35 billion sale of the brand to Diamond Foods of California, a deal which would have more than tripled the size of Diamond's snack business. <laughs> However, the deal fell through in February 2012 after a year-long delay due to issues over Diamond's accounts. Oh. On May 31, 2012, the Kellogg Company officially acquired Pringles for $2.695 billion as part of a plan to grow its international snacks business. The acquisition of Pringles makes Kellogg the second largest snack company in the world. As of 2015, there are five Pringles factories worldwide in Jackson, Tennessee, Metzlin, Belgium, Shore, Malaysia, Kutnow, Poland, and Fujian, China. Pringles have about 42% potato content, the remainder being wheat starch and flours, potato, corn, and rice, combined with vegetable oils and emulsifier, salt, and seasoning. <laughs> Other ingredients can include sweeteners such as melted dextrin and dextrose, monosodium glutamate, MSG, posodium inosinate, posodium guanolate, sodium casinate, modified food starch, monoglyceride and deglyceride, autolus yeast extract, natural and artificial flavorings, malted barley flour, wheat bran, and dried black beans, sour cream, cheddar cheese, etc. Pringles varieties vary in their ingredients. Pringles also produces several tortilla and multi-grain varieties which have some of their base starch ingredients replaced with corn flour, rice, wheat bran, black beans, and barley flour. <laughs> At one point in the early 1990s, corn Pringles were available. The canister was black and had cartoon images of corn. The chips were made of corn and resemble the corn chip in flavor and texture. <laughs> Rice Pringles were also available in the UK, although it had been discontinued. One serving of about 16 Pringles, original flavor, contains 150 calories, 2.5 g of saturated fat, 150 milligrams of sodium, 110 milligrams of potassium, and 1 g of protein. Pringles are available in several flavors. <laughs> Until the 1980s, only the original flavor was available in the U.S. <sighs> Standard flavors in the U.S. as of 2020 include original, salt and vinegar, sour cream and onion, cheddar cheese, ranch dressing, barbecue, hot and spicy, and loaded baked potato. <laughs> Some flavors are distributed only to limited market areas. For example, prawn cocktail, wasabi, and curry flavors have been available in the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. Occasionally, PMG produced limited edition runs. <laughs> Seasonal flavors, past and present, include ketchup, zesty lime and chili, chili cheese dog, is delicious. Paprika, Texas BBQ sauce, buffalo wing, and Cajun. The low fat variety was also sold. Whoa! Examples of limited edition flavors include jalapeno, honey mustard, cheesy fries, onion blossom, mozzarella cheese stick, screaming dill pickle, and Mexican layer dip. 
In 2012, they brought out seasonal flavors of peppermint white chocolate, cinnamon sugar, and pumpkin pie spice. Other examples of limited runs only in certain parts of the world include as mozzarella stick with marinara in North America and jalapeno in Latin America, also soft shell crab. Grilled shrimp, seaweed, blueberry and hazelnut, and lemon and sesame in Asia in early 2010s. The grilled shrimp chips are pink in color while seaweed is colored green. Two limited market flavors, cheeseburger and taco night, were recalled in March 2010 as a safety precaution after salmonella was found in a basic food flavors plant which produced the flavor enhancing high-fluid vegetable protein used in those flavors. Rindles is advertised in the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia and Ireland with a slogan, Once you pop, the fun don't stop, along with the original slogan, Once you pop, you can't stop. The original Grindle's television commercials were written, produced and directed by Thomas Scott Cadden, composer of the original Mr. Clean Jingle, in 1968, while working at Atham Laird & Kudner Advertising Agency in Chicago. Throughout its history, Grindle's used its print and television advertising campaigns to compare their products to conventional potato chips. In its early years, they were marketed as Grindle's newfangled potato chips and had a small silver pop top to open the can. Unlike the current advertising, they only mention that, with their pop top cans, which have been replaced with foil tops since the late 1980s, their chips remain fresh and unbroken. The can holds as many chips as a typical large bag, and their curvy shape allows them to be stackable, thus inspiring the slogan, Other potato chips just don't stack up. By the 1980s, the company launched the Pringle Jingle, whose lyrics were, Once you taste the flavor, it's a deep fried taste. Then you get the fever, with a crispy crunch. Then you've got the fever for the flavor of a Pringle. Beginning in the late 1990s and continuing today, Grindle's advertising has returned to comparing their product to bag chips, which they view as greasy and broken. Whoa! In a typical ad, a group of people are enjoying Grindle's while a lone person is eating a bag of generic potato chips. The bags themselves resemble either Lay's or Ruffles. Depending on the Grindle's variety marketed in the ad. <sighs> They dump out some broken potato chips into their hand, only to find they are greasy, and end up wiping the grease on their clothing. The Grindle's logo is a stylized cartoon caricature of the head of a male figure, officially known as Julius Grindle's, designed by Louis R. Dixon, with a large mustache and parted fangs. Until 2001, the character had eyebrows and his bow tie. Free the product name, in 1998, the fangs and lips were removed from the logo, and his head was whitened a little. Grindles, as a product brand, is especially known for its packaging, a tubular paperboard can with a foil-lined interior. Until the 1980s, the cans also contained a removable paper liner, which held the chips in place, and a resealable plastic lid, which was invented by Frederick J. Hoare, an organic chemist and food storage technician who specialized in research and development and quality control for Cincinnati-based Procter & Gamble. <laughs> Towards children, honor his request to bury him in one of the cans by placing part of his cremated remains in a Pringles container in his grave. The can has been criticized for being difficult to recycle due to the multiple materials used in its construction. In 2013, Lucasfilm and Pringles jointly commissioned crowdsourcing video studio Tondo for a commercial with a total of $75,000 in prize money distributed to seven finalists. That's all today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and see you in episode 6.